Hello, everybody. My name is Sniping is Fun, and I welcome you all back to my next video. We present to all of you here on YouTube. And today's video is to be the first of two different Fire Emblem discussions I'm going to present to all of you because of. I basically stated it about like a week or two ago. I was going to be giving you guys some Fire Emblem discussions. This one is going to detail my thoughts on the final product and what we know so far of Fire Emblem Warriors, the crossover with Koei Tecmo's you know, Mushu series, Dynasty Warriors, Samurai Warriors. A lot of people seem to forget about Samurai Warriors, especially Nintendo fans for some reason. They always say Dynasty Warriors, Dynasty Warriors, Dynasty Warriors. And then next one I'm going to do is going to be my thoughts on the series as a whole and what I hope comes with the Switch game next year in 2018 of Fire Emblem 15 or 16. Yeah, it should be, it's 16. 15 was Echoes. Okay. Um, this one is going to be my thoughts on the overall product, the pros and the cons. And a lot of people, if you read this online, they, a lot of people seem to have cons with Fire Emblem Warriors. And I want to just settle it right here right now my own thoughts my own opinions on fire emblem warriors and where i stand and where i agree and disagree with the rest of the internet and the rest of the nintendo fans and gamers out there and yada 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 now what we know so far of fire emblem warriors is that when the game was announced they didn't really specify who was going to be in it and whatnot they just kind of showed crom picking up the sword they showed fire emblem warriors logo and they showed the symbols. So, you know, we're going to probably get like some of the Fates and Awakening and stuff like that. We know Mark's going to be in there, so on and so forth. They didn't really specify who was and was not going to be in the game. Months later, when they started and that when they announced it, they said the game was going to be exclusively Shadow Dragon, which is Mark's game, Awakening, which is Robin, Lynn, and Lucina's Robin, Lynn, Robin, Lucina, and Crom's game, and Fate, which is Xander, Ryoma, Corin's game. You know, basically the main characters of each one. Basically, the recent, the two recent outside of the Echoes, you know, Guide remake, and then the original game, which is Marv's game, because he's the original lore, and you kind of have to have him in a game like this. And when this information was announced, you cannot believe the amount of backlash that people gave online, on YouTube, on Facebook, all over the freaking internet everywhere of nintendo fans went at, and fire emblem fans especially within the nintendo fan base went absolutely nuts when the roster was announced to be so limited and here's my thoughts before i get started on that there are cons and there are pros to this and yes people out there that people that think all oh, this is just 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 bad marketing is stupid and they cannot they can't do this there are pros to it and that is being able to focus on various minor sub characters from said games and be able to have a diverse moves you know a diverse roster that doesn't include all the main characters and just a bunch of sword characters which didn't really help a lot because there are a lot of sword characters in there but here's the thing people if you look at dynasty warriors and you look at samurai warriors you can't just look at hyrule warriors for this if you look at the main franchises a lot of the characters use swords. That's just how things go. And I know that's a problem for you that played Hyrule Warriors and saw the giant Megaton hammers and the Master Swords and all the mages and whatnot. That was a pretty diverse Warriors game. But most Fire Emblem, you know, most Dynasty Samurai Warriors, most Mushu games don't really have much of anything besides swords, like axes, and lances slash spears. That's basically what you see most characters wear. There's some original weapons. They've added more since in the later Dynasty Warriors, later Samurai Warriors. But it's there. I know that's a complaint from a lot of fans, but it's there. And it has happened in the main series. I know some of you Nintendo fans out there, Fire fans out there, may have not played the damn Dynasty Warriors in the damn Samurai Warriors game. But that's kind of a focus on a lot of games because a lot of people in that time kind of used swords. That was like a preferred weapon for a lot of people. Um, that's that's the high of the point. Like they said, that, like if they did focus on try to focus on the entire series, and I know that's what a lot of Nintendo fans want, a lot of Fire Emblem fans want. They wanted the game to be a focus on multiple different games. They wanted the entire series represented. They wanted Sacred Stones. They wanted you know Blazing Sword, Binding Blade, Mystery of the Dragon. They wanted you know. Echoes, they wanted Path of Radiance, Rain of Dawn, Fates, Awakening. They wanted Genealogy of Holy War, Thracia, 7, 7, 6. They wanted the entire Fire Emblem series represented. And the good thing about that would be is it's representing the entire franchise. But the bad thing is doing so would kind of force them to have to have every single main character. And most main characters in the Fire Emblem series either have blue hair and or a sword. 
You kind of ha you can't just be like, oh, we're going to put we're represent sacred stones, but we're not going to have Erika or Ephron. We're going to put in Wolf or whatever. Although I think that was a different game. I'm mixing people up now. You know, we're going to put the main character, and then that will piss people off. That or, oh, why aren't you putting the main characters in? Like representing the entire series, you kind of have to have every single main character of the game. And you know how big the roster would be if they have every single main character? It'd be about 30, 30 some odd characters, 30 to 35 characters. Because think about it, you know, Fates has like three or four main characters. Awakening has three. You know, the Ike games are Ike and Mar. I mean, Marth. Ike and Micaiah. Then you have the twin sis siblings in Sacred Stones, and you have the three main characters of Binding Blade or Blazing Sword. Blazing Sword. Binding Blade has basically two main characters, and you know Hector's daughter and Roy and whatnot. And most game and earlier games have one or two main characters, so that's about thirty right there. So the problem with them trying to represent the entire series, and I know that's what we all wanted. I want that too. I just said that. I want to see Micaiah. I want to see Ephron. I want to see. I. I'm a long time fan of the series. I love all Fire Emblem. I don't hate certain Fire Emblems like people out there that hate Fates Awakening and think the series has went downhill since Ike's games. Um, I don't think that. I think the series has just evolved and I think it's expanded to be more accessible for more people. And that's a good thing, people. The way Fire Emblem was going, and I'm not saying this is a bad thing. I'm, I, I'm not saying there's no cons. I'm going to get two cons in a second. The way Fire Emblem was going, though, they expanded and made the series more accessible, which I think it needs to be, but it still had characters and story and difficulty. If you didn't want to do Phoenix mode, you didn't have to do damn Phoenix mode. It was just there. The, the, the cons are there's miss, it's missing a lot of the franchise representing in those three games. The pros are they get to focus on more minor characters in that game, because if they focus on the entire series, you wouldn't get characters like, you know, Liz or some of the royal families in, you know, away, in Fates or... I don't know, Sheeta maybe, you know, one of the main characters from Marf's game, uh, hello, because they'd be focused on putting Ephraim and Ike in there, you wouldn't, and Hector, you wouldn't get Sheeta, because she's not, she's not the main character, it's Marth. The pros are, you get to focus on some side characters from some of the series. The cons, you miss out on a lot of the series, and if you did you know, focus on it, you'd be missing out on forcing yourself to put main characters in there, forcing yourself to put all these characters in there, and then having no room for villains and no room for side characters because you already filled up a 30 some character roster with all the freaking main characters. And if you cut any main characters, oh, we're not going to put in Leaf, people will be mad. Like, why did you exclude Leaf? Why did you exclude Ephron? Why do you exclude Hector? Why do you exclude Corrin? Why do you exclude Alm or Celica? People will be wondering why you exclude certain main characters but not others. Focusing on three main games allows them to focus all their time on that. And I know that's not what a lot of fans wanted, but I think to start off with picking the original Lord and the two recent ones that sold a lot and a lot more fans nowadays overall worldwide, especially because, you know, Fire Emblem is now a worldwide franchise. It's not just exclusively in Japan where it's not just for your own little, you know, internet troll fan base that's been there for, you know, since day one when you hacked and imported all your freaking Japanese games. I'm not saying that I, I'm not even trying to bash the Fire Emblem fan base. I love the fi Fire Emblem series, and the Fire Emblem fans are fun to talk to. But one thing I would say, though, I'm not trying to bash you guys, but the fan base is kind of toxic. It is one of Nintendo's most toxic fan base, one of the game's most toxic fan bases, because they never know when to shut up. Because there's certain fans that want this, but they don't want this, but those fans want this, but those fans don't want this, and the old fans versus the new fans, and I want this versus I want that, and it's just crazy. Fire Emblem Warriors has its focus on those three games. And those are some of the three biggest games in the series. I know you're missing a lot of characters. I really, like I just said, I want to see them. But I could see why they focus on it. It was a marketing point. Is it a good marketing point? Not really. But it allows them to balance out the roster with some more characters from those games instead of just focusing on all the main characters. And that's really about it. And I'm looking at the roster right now. And so far, the roster we have, let me get a look. Original characters, we have the twins, super, which a lot of people don't like how blonde their hairs are, Rowan and Liana. Um, and then Anna is in the game too. We got from Shadow Dragon, Marf, Sheeta, Tiki, and then I'm going to go into spoilers territory. So if you don't know what, don't know anything about this game, if you haven't been paying attention to the Japanese version, there's Navare and Garnef, which are not playable. Then there's Salica from Shadows of Valentia Echoes, Blazing Blade is Lynn, and then from Awakening we have Male and Female Robins, Crom, Lissa, Frederick, Cordelia, Lucina, Owain, Valadar, and from Fates we have Female and Malcorn, Ryoma, Hinoka, Takumi, Sakura, Oboro, which is not playable, Xander, Camila, 
Leo, Elise, Niles, who's not playable, and Iago, who's not playable. They're in the story. They're not playable. And I think that's going to be part... I, I would assume they're going to be free DLC, like how Sia and all this stuff was free DLC for Hyrule Warriors. I think some of those characters will be free DLC. Speaking of DLC, then they and everyone's like, okay, they're going to add all those characters as DLC in the future games. And what happens, the DLC packs we so far know about are all from the three games they so far announced. And then the entire internet burned down because all the Fire Emblem fans got pissed off. Or at least the fanboys, extremist fans, got pissed off and burned down the internet. Um... Here's the thing. They said if those things were popular and the, ser and the game and DLC did well and the game did well, there'd be more DLC. One thing here is they said that the DLC was focusing on those. They didn't say those DLC packs were entirely Shadow Dragon's Fates and Awakening. I know we got Bridal, Costume Lucina, and blah, blah, blah. And there's probably going to be some characters like non-royal families for Fates, some more of, you know, Krom's army, you know, the Shepherds in Awakening and more of like, you know, Navare and freaking Drog and, you know, Cain and Abel probably for Shadow Dragon, but that doesn't mean they might not throw in a, a you know, a Ephraim or a Hector or a Leaf into those picks. You never know. And then you can go off and there might be more DLC packs. Maybe there will be a Legends DLC pack, a Historical DLC pack where they start adding more characters. See, that's the thing. I know I've been kind of bickering, you know, jumping back and forth between opinions here and there and whatnot, but here's here's my main thoughts on this. Fire Emblem Warriors has its good points and its bad points. Me, as a fan of the Mushu games in, in general, I've been a fan since Dynasty Warriors 3 back in like 2001. I played Dynasty Warriors 4, 5, I never got around to playing 6 or 7, I played 8, I played Samurai Warriors 1, Samurai Warriors 2, Samurai Warriors 3, I played Empires 4. Dynasty Warriors, Empires 5, Samurai Warriors, Empires 2, whatever, you know, and stuff like that. I haven't gotten around the Hyrule Warriors yet or the other spinoffs like, you know, Berserk or Gundam or One Piece or whatever. But I look at I love just the hack and slash nature of it. Regardless of who's in the game, I'm going to love just going around hacking and slashing useless soldiers and having a lot of freaking fun with it. That in and of itself is appealing to me regardless of the Fire Emblem thing. I've been wanting a Fire Emblem crossover freaking Mushu, Dice Warriors, Samurai Warriors series for a long freaking time, like a lot of Nintendo gamers, a lot of gamers out there want. And, I, and I've been waiting patiently all these years for them to finally do a crossover that they finally do it, and just because of who they put in there, you're going to bicker and complain? I know it's a problem, I know we want all of it, but here's the thing, Hyrule Warriors did the same thing, and I know comparing Zelda, who only has a select few characters throughout the entire series, versus Fire Emblem, who has a billion freaking characters in each game, who the heck are you going to pick? Who the heck are you going to pick out of like 5,000 soldiers that you can recruit? Enemies, villains, side characters, main characters. See, that's, I know the difference there. I really do. Do not think I don't. But who... Honestly, are you, oh, I'm going to pick this side character of this side character. How do you choose? Do you do a poll like in Fire Emblem Heroes? Because then that's going to piss people off even more. I know a lot of people said if the, if the representation was a little more varied, it'd be a little more open. Yeah, I get that. And that probably would be a better choice. But then you'd be missing out on certain characters, and certain characters would be DLC, and then you have to do it for a sequel. And they already said if there was a sequel, they're going to focus on more games and blah, blah, blah. But Hyrule Warriors did the same thing with Ocarina of Time. Twilight Princess and Skyward Sword. A lot of people are like, where is the link between worlds? Where's the original? Where's Return of Link or whatever? Here's a link to the past. Where's Majora's Mask? Where's Wind Waker? You know, people would be saying all this stuff. And they did. I was in the fan base. I paid attention. I saw it. Now people are saying, where's Thrasia? Where's Genealogy? Where's Echoes? Even though we have, yeah, that was before Celico was announced, but they're like, is that all we get from Echoes? And Where's Ike's games? Where's the Smash Brothers characters like Ike and Roy, which a lot of people want them in the game because they know them from Smash Brothers, not because they know them from freaking Fire Emblem. It's just that it's like, there are pros and cons. I'm looking forward to this game because I just overall love Fire Emblem. I like the old and the new. I like the older games and the newer games. I want to see remakes of Genealogy and Thrasia and I want to see Heroes of Light and Shadow make it out of damn Japan, which was a DS game we didn't get because Shadow Dragon did crap here. I want to play more old games. I want to play more new games. And I like where the series is going because it's getting more popular. It's adding more things to do, more side things to do, more things to do outside the main story. You can do difficulties. You can do side missions. You can do the Phoenix mode if you want. You can grind your soldiers. You can do supports. You can do online My Castle battles, multiplayer, whatever. There's a lot of stuff. I like where the series is going overall. And I like the Fire Renaissance that we're in right now. And I do 
like that we finally got a you know Fire Emblem Warriors crossover game. Just because it's not entirely what I expected or what I wanted or what people wanted, I'm not going to go bash it. Is it my complaining? If I, am I fully you know satisfied with this game? No, but I have enough satisfaction with what we have there that I am going to enjoy it. And when I get my Switch, I am buying this damn game because I like the Dynasty Warriors Samurai Warriors games. I like Fire Emblem, and I don't care who's limited in there because I have faith that there's going to probably be more DLC past these three packs. And if they do a sequel, they're going to add more characters. And I understand why they picked these character these games because they're the main ones that sold out and were probably the more popular ones. Even though I'm not saying Ice games aren't popular, I'm not saying Genealogy isn't popular or you know Game Boy Advance games aren't popular, but these ones were universally major popular. Fire Emblem, you know, Awakening brought the series back. I'm not going to say that like it actually fully brought the series back because there are like marketing and stuff like that brought the series back. And then Fates did well off of Awakening and Shadow Dragon was obviously Mars Games the original. You have to include it. So I know why they marketed for three games like they did, you know, Hyrule Warriors. I think they could have probably been a bit more varied and maybe threw in maybe a couple more side things like how they did just Salika and Lin and maybe just throw in one character for a certain select other games and then you expand those through DLC. I'm not saying it's perfect. I'm not saying it's great. But the online community of Fire Emblem needs to start. Stop bickering like a bunch of old, you know, <laughs> long time married couples. Like they, it seems like the old fans and new fans and just fans in general are just bickering just to bicker. And I'm not saying that you don't have the right to. And you, you do. And I am not, I'm not fully satisfied with the game either, but I'm enough satisfied to the point where I am guaranteed it's on a lock for a purchase for me because I like the Mushu series, I love Fire Emblem, and I love the characters in there because there's characters I want to play as. It doesn't matter if I don't have Micaiah or Leaf or Arvis or Sigurd or Ohm. I got Liz, who I want to play as, Frederick, who I want to play as. I want to play as Ryoma and Xander. I have Lynn. I have Anna. I have Marth. I have a bunch of characters I do want to play as. And there will be more DLC. And I'm sure this is one that's going to get a sequel. And I'm like I said, my final thoughts, and I know I've been jumping around here may, like all over the place this entire damn video. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry for jumping from one point to another. The pros and the cons. There are pros and cons. And I know there's a lot of Nintendo fans, a lot of Fire Emblem fans that agree with me that the whole... Like Fire Emblem Elitist, the old school fans that have complaints, people like, what's in this? Yeah, some of their complaints are justified. But then a lot of their complaints, not just for Fire Emblem Wars, but the entire Fire Emblem series in general, is them just bickering because the series is not exclusively for them anymore. It's for the other fans. It's for the casual fans. It's for the newer fans. And series, game series, and this applies to movies and books and comics and everything too, if you want something to be majorly more successful, you have to go for more of a larger audience. And they've added stuff to the series that have made Fire Emblem more accessible and more largely popular than it was. It's still not outside the niche category, but it's more largely popular than a lot of Nintendo franchises are now. I put it in the A category with pretty much like Mario and Zelda and Pokemon. It's just not exactly on the level. It's like a level below them, but it's like not the A plus, it's the A category now. And I love the Renaissance we're going through, And I, but you kind of have to add this stuff. And there's, it's not like they're not having stuff for you guys. There's a lot of difficulty options and stuff like that too. The stuff in the games you don't even have to do. You can play it like classic Fire Emblem. I just am looking forward to this game because I finally get to see something I've been wanting to see for a long, long time. And it may not be exactly what I wanted, but it's close enough to the point where at least I'm going to enjoy the ride when I play it. And I know other Fire Emblem and Nintendo fans and gamers out there agree with me. And it's if we show support and still continue to say what we want, Intelligent Systems, Nintendo, Koei Tecmo will probably listen, and that probably will be DLC. It probably will be the stuff. You, know, you don't know what they're going to do for DLC. You don't know if there's going to be a sequel. The complaining makes sense, but at the, at the same time, sometimes it can go a little too far, and I'm honestly tired of seeing all the bickering the Fire Emblem fans have online. Do I agree with them? Yes. Do I agree with them on everything? No. And do I think they need to kind of shut the hell up sometimes? Yes, but there is a time and place for everything. There's a time and place for you to speak your opinion and have something to say and tell these companies what you want and what you don't want and whatnot. And when you act like a bunch of babies online, you just sound like a bunch of assholes. You really, really do. I'm not doing it to hate you guys. I'm not hating the fan base. I love Fire Emblem fans and talking to them online about the series that I love. We all love, and there's stuff we don't like. Everything is never supposed to be perfect. This game was never going to be perfect. Hyrule Warriors wasn't perfect. We didn't get freaking Groose. We didn't get freaking, you know, a, a bunch of side characters like Saria and everything. We didn't get 
every single character from the series that a lot of fans would have won. Old Man in the Cave. There's a lot of characters they missed in that series. It just made was closer to perfection because the Zelda franchise doesn't have a lot of universally acceptable characters to throw into something like this. And they add a bunch of DLC. They add like four to six games as DLC. You don't think they're going to do the same thing with Zelda? With this thing? I'm just saying, people, please, please just have patience. Tell them what you want, but don't be a bunch of fanboy crybabies with it. And enjoy the series that we love. And if you love the Dynasty Warrior Samurai series and you wanted to see this game for a long time, enjoy it for what it is. And maybe one day, what you exactly want, whether it be DLC or a sequel, we can finally get it. I My opinion is I'm going to enjoy this, whether like, stuff I like and dislike and what I thought the buildup was for, the marketing and blah, blah, blah. But at the same time, people, you need to take it in strides. You need to just... Enjoy the ride and find something to enjoy. You're not, you were never going to enjoy the full game anyways. There are people that probably didn't play as certain characters in Hyrule Warriors. There's people that don't play as Wu or Shu or Wei in Dynasty Warriors. They, there's char characters they like more or the different armies. And, you know, like Samurai Warriors or the various good guys, bad guys, whatever, in Gundam or One Piece or something. Like, you're never going to enjoy the entire roster. Find what you do enjoy and hope for the best going on. That's all I can say is like, because it seems like there's so many complaints. This is not just for Warriors, but for the Fire Emblem series in general. And I'm just like, I want to enjoy the games. I love Fire Emblem to death. And I'm hoping they remake more of the old games. I'm hoping there's a sequel for Fire Emblem Warriors. There's more characters they add through DLC and whatnot. But we don't know that now. We're in 2017. Maybe in 2019 there will be a sequel. 2020 there will be a sequel. Maybe there will be some DLC in 2018 outside of these packs. I don't know. I just want to have some patience. Tell them what you want, but do it in a nice timely sophisticated manner and don't just drive in all caps like i want this i want that i want this screw you going tecmo faith sucks ah. see y'all later in my next video